In this video, we're going to teach you the firm's top 10 most profitable exit techniques used daily by our entire desk of over 50 prop traders. It's one thing to get a good entry into a stock. It's a whole other thing to exit profitably. The exit is the one thing traders screw up more than anything else. Doing it wrong can cause you to leave a huge amount of money on the table or even worse, turning winning trades into losers. So there are a few things worth learning more than this. Don't miss this video. I'm Mike Bellafiori and we're one of the top proprietary trading firms located in New York City and proud to have developed numerous seven and even eight figure per year traders. We hope you agree. This is the top YouTube channel to help you grow your trading account. You've had a good entry. You know, you found a trade with edge that's in your playbook. You looked for the opportunity. You identified this trade. You, you passed up on any trade that really wasn't in your playbook. This trade just hit you right between the eyes. The opportunity to enter just fell right into your lap. Then the trade kind of started to work the way you wanted it to work. It started to act the way it's supposed to act based on the shot clock you have for this trade specifically. Sometimes it's just so infuriating to have it go against you after getting it so close to target. But also other times it can be so frustrating to be out of the trade early just to watch it continue to run. Today we're gonna to talk through three different styles of trades. And we're gonna study ways to make advanced level trading decisions in each, focused entirely on our reasons to sell for specific trades. So we're gonna start by covering the three types of trades we make the most. We make scalps, we make move to move trades, and we make, make trades to hold the most. Now scalps can be primarily candlestick scalps are things that we're gonna talk about today. We're not really gonna get into tape scalps. They tend to have their own reasons to sell entirely. And we usually don't even wanna rely on a, a chart for the tape scalps. For this, we wanna use candlestick scalps. So we're talking about very specific candlestick patterns that give us this scalping opportunity. Move to move trades. These are the trades that we expect to set up and then move and maybe have a little period of consolidation or retracement, but then continue the move in the direction. Move to move trades are trades that can really, really help you get some great risk reward. You tend to give up a little consistency over the scalpings, the scalp trades, but move to move trades really can be a great way to trade, especially if you're somebody who likes to let the price action develop. Trades to hold. Trades to hold can happen on different time frames. Most of the time we talk about trades to hold as intraday trades only, but for the examples here, because of the fact that you can consider a swing trade a trade to hold, swing trade is just kind of a really long version of a trade to hold, we're going to show a couple trade to hold examples in the swing context as well. You know, these exits, none of them are specific to the trade themselves. Most traders, especially when you're starting out, you should have your own defined reasons to sell for each trade. That's the first 20 trades you take of any playbook trade should have its own very defined reasons to sell for each of those trades. The reason is, is because as you're adding these in, these are a little bit subjective. They're very, very powerful, but they can be a little subjective. These are just ways, what we're gonna cover are just ways to make better trading decisions in the moment. They are to protect your P&L when the price action might reverse, but also to enhance your P&L when the trade really is working and doing what it should do. Overall, this category of reasons to sell is situational trading at its best. This is just situational awareness in trading. So let's get into the strategies. Let's start first with our momentum exits. And we're gonna cover momentum exits specifically for candlestick scalps. So right now we're gonna look at the chart of AMD and we have a Bella scalp, a Bella fade for AMD. We're gonna talk through the specifics of a prior bar low or prior bar high stop. So this would be a reason to sell when the trade is starting to work already 
and you're waiting for the prior bar low to be breached if you're long or the prior bar high to be breached if you're short. The chart we're looking at, we're talking about a Bella fade on the short side. So you can see how the price action comes in and we get this really nice squeeze and then we start to get the roll. Once the move starts to accelerate, right, as we're talking about this consolidation area right in here, as the move starts to accelerate, we have no idea, no concept of how long this move could last. The best thing about trading is we don't really have to predict. Some people will say use price targets, but this is a situation where the trade is working. It's doing exactly what it should do. So a really nice way to stick with this trade, this momentum trade, is by looking at the close of the prior bar. If the bar closes above the prior bar high, that's the first time we have to take our position off. So we can walk through this bar by bar. Okay, we get our momentum here starting, and these are equal, the, you know, the close is right there. It's below the prior bar open. There we go, keep moving down, keep moving down, keep moving down. Again, we get a wick up, but it doesn't close above the prior bar high. Then we get another move lower, another move lower. We get another wick up, but it doesn't close above the prior bar high. Then we get a move down, and finally we get a close above a prior bar high. Now that can be a very effective and very tight way to manage your risk for a reason to sell. This is one of the most aggressive ways to manage your risk for a reason to sell, is just trail it down, trail it down, trail it down, trail it down. Finally, when that bar closes, you're stopped out of your position. Our second strategy that we can use for momentum trading is the first green bar or the first red bar strategy. In this trade, we're looking at a second chance scalp long, right? We get this break, we get the retest, and then we're looking for the momentum to continue to the upside. But we're gonna use a first red bar strategy, right? We do this especially in a, a when we have real momentum in kind of a squeezy name. So this name on, on this day in particular was very squeezy price action, high short interest, kind of a, a nice up move. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to protect it from coming against us. You know, when you get this sort of squeezy price action, you can get a quick, hard, hard, hard dropout. And so we're using this first red bar strategy as a way to get out of the trade quickly. As soon as the momentum kind of stalls or pauses, we'll get out of the trade. So you can just stick with it as long as you have green bars after you've entered the trade. So we'll take it back and we'll walk through this starting bar by bar. And we'll talk about the exact spot to exit the trade. So we get one bar forward and we're in our trade. Okay, we, we're we waiting for a red bar. We get, you know, kind of a down move, but then we get that green bar. Okay, down move, then we get a green bar. Down move, then we get a green bar. We keep moving our stop up, waiting for a red bar to close. And if a red bar closes, we're out of our position. Nice up move, a little hesitation, okay. There's hesitation there, but we didn't get a red bar. We're ready to exit and we get a red bar. So we're out of our trade. All right, we just rode that momentum all the way up. Usually we would wanna kinda of work our way out of the trade or a lot of people would say, oh, I'm looking for this price target or that price target. This trade was just doing exactly what it should do. The volume was increasing, we were seeing that squeeze. And so we could just stay with it until we get our first red bar. I don't really care what happens to the trade after that. I've ridden the momentum, now I can be out of the trade. I've protected myself from this kind of coming all the way back against me with one other big red bar. Now we're gonna talk about kind of an extreme blow off. We can call it ding, dinner's ready, right? It's a very simple but very opportunistic exit. When you see it, you definitely wanna take profits and you wanna be done with the trade. We're assuming there's no fresh news in the trade and we're making a couple other assumptions as well. Ideally that, you know, this price action's already a little bit extended before we take this ding extreme blow off um, with the 921 trade. You can think about it like, you know, uh, turkey and and the little, the little temperature thing pops out of the turkey at the end of it, right? Tell you that dinner's ready. This is an extreme blow off and we just see this pop right off at the end. So let's look at Bitcoin. 
and we're going to look specifically at this this 90 ma reclaim scalp right so you can make make these li little scalps um from time to time and this is just a really good example of like a 90 ma reclaim right so we get the breakout and we're starting to trend and then we get a dip and then a reclaim so we'll start to play it right from here and we'll move forward to do the the ding dinner's ready sort of replay so price action looks like it might reclaim that can be an entry stop below the low there very, very simple, straightforward, pure momentum scalp type trading. We get the nice up move. Okay, we're now above. That's great, our stop is the low. We're kind of looking for some sort of blow off move, but we don't really know what. We wanna give it time and an opportunity to blow off. Well, what sort of price action are we looking for for it to really blow off? That wasn't really it. We never saw volume, but now we're trying to see. Okay, boom. We got a big move on big volume, dinner's ready. Ding, we'll take our trade, take our exit and move on. We don't know what's gonna happen next, but it's already extended and then we get that sort of price action, just take it and move on. That is a really good way to exit a trade that's showing momentum when you get that sort of blow off volume with that sort of blow off candle. It's just the turkey, the, the temperature gauge is popping out of it, it's done, move on. We're gonna call this next reason to sell a double stuff. This is one where the price action looks like the trade should work, but it gives you a double stuff and it tells you that the trade's probably not gonna be working. So this is a good reason to sell when a trade is almost there, but it just doesn't get to your target. You actually get a double stuff and that's just, that's the end of the trade right there. You don't wanna let it come back against you. You wanna be out, you wanna move on. So let's talk about a backside trade in AI. So we had the nice bounce up and we'll start the chart from right about here where the backside trade really kind of does start. So we get this nice up move and our target's VWAP, remember? So we expect, at this point, we definitely expect it to go to VWAP. It looks pretty good actually. You know, the volume's starting to creep up. Everything about this trade is telling us that it's gonna work. We have no reason to make any adjustments whatsoever. We get a down move, but that's not even a stuff. That's just more of a pause. And we would expect that last little rush up to make it to VWAP. Okay, so now we're starting to see the potential of a pullback here. And I don't like that pullback, but if we see this, what do I think should happen? Okay, it should clear this level and it should go right to target, right? Okay, looking really good. We're almost to target, that's great. Oh, wow, this is really gonna work. Oh, man. Okay. And then right there, you see that up move that looks like it should go right here, and it doesn't. Now we've been stuffed two times, almost three. I wouldn't count this as really a stuff, but that third one definitely, there's no reason for sellers to be right there. Price should have just exploded right through VWAP, and it didn't. As much as I want to hope that this trade goes all the way up here, we just had a double stuff. And we're very unlikely to get it higher at this point. So I'm going to exit my trade. That's going to be my reason to sell so I can protect the profit that I have because I don't want to let it come back against me. I want to be out and just move on. Now let's step into some move to move trades and some reasons to sell for move to move trades. Move to move trades are a little more trending than, than candlestick scalps, which are typically momentum oriented. So our move to move trades, the reasons to sell for a really good move to move trade will be different than they will be for pure momentum scalps. Here are a couple examples that we can cover. So we're gonna look at this chart and we're gonna talk about a second trend line break. It can also be termed an accelerated trend line break. So we have this very nice trend line that price action was supporting. It pulled away from a little bit and then it sort of come back. We're in a move to move trade. We had a really good break with volume. The volume stayed up there. So everything we have in this trade looks really good. We get our break and then we get our first touch. So we have a trend line that's developed. But then we start to get this acceleration from the trend line. Well, what do we do at this point? Okay, well, I don't wanna use this trend line that's way down here as we start to accelerate higher. So I'm just gonna draw a graduated trend line. And I'm gonna start that graduated trend line or accelerated trend line from this move. And when I get that pull in, then I'm gonna move my trend line up here, right? As soon as we start to go, you could 
draw it there. If you wanted to, you could draw it on this, on the lows of this, that's fine too. It doesn't really matter, but when you get an acceleration from a trend line, just redraw a more aggressive trend line and use that second accelerated trend line as your exit. We're not talking about being perfect here. These aren't exact reasons to sell. These are guides. When the stock is really paying you well, stick with it as long as you possibly can and understand what your reason to sell is. This example, of an accelerated trend line. You can draw a trend line however you want to, but when it accelerates away from the dominating trend line, you know, this trend line right here, this clean price action, when you get that acceleration away from it, that's where you wanna draw a more aggressive trend line and stay with the stock until that trend line breaks. As soon as that trend line breaks, you actually have a reason to sell. So let's go through this bar by bar example. All right, so now we have a pretty clear trend line that we can draw. We could start at this point and go here, or we could start at this point and go here. Totally up to you, however you wanna draw. But let's assume that this is the dominant trend. We had an acceleration away from it and then a pullback. Okay, we'll keep playing it forward. Well, now we're not pulling back to that trend line, we're just holding sideways. Well, what if we break up higher? Well, do I still want my stop to be the trend? or do I want my stop to be some arbitrary price target? Well, I'm seeing the volume that's working in this trade. I mean, I wanna give it as long as it possibly can. So what, what could I do? Well, I could draw an accelerated trend line from here if I wanted to. Oh, well that held. Okay, let's see what happens. Well, that worked. All right, great. Now I'm waiting for that accelerated trend line to break. But what happened again? Well, now it's accelerating even more. So what, do you, what could you do? You could draw another accelerated trend line if you wanted to. Just connecting the lows. And then finally you would get stopped out on that, that now third accelerated trend line here. Usually you just like to see two accelerated trend lines. In this case, we get a third, but look at how much longer you can just stay with the stock by just allowing that to work, right? Again, the premise here is when you get acceleration away from your first trend line, you can draw a second trend line. Wait until that trend line breaks. If it doesn't break, and in this case, you get more acceleration, you can draw a third trend line. A third trend line is pretty rare. Usually it's just two trend lines. But in this case, this, this worked. It kept you in the trade for longer because the trade was doing exactly what it should have been doing for you to stay in it. So now we're gonna use the 21 EMA close as a guide. This is a move to move trade. We had this up move, pull in, nice VWAP reclaim trade, right? VWAP's this purple line. And then we start to see the price action accelerating. So you, some people use the 9 EMA close, but for a move to move trade in particular, I like to stay with it or we like to stay with it longer. So you're really looking for a defined close below the, the 21 EMA. So the 21 versus the nine, the 21's a little longer. You can get a little more movement away from it. Really the 21 EMA can tell you a lot about the sustainability of a stock. So when you're trading move to move, you wanna be giving it a little bit of room to breathe. You wanna be letting it work. In this case, the stock was doing exactly what you wanted to do for a VWAP reclaim, which is it kind of dipped and then reclaimed, started to hold above VWAP and then started to trend higher. So to stay with that trend for the move to move trade, all you have to do is use a 21 EMA or you know whatever moving average you wanna do, but I prefer the 21 and let that be a guide. Again, this is specific to move to move trading. We're gonna walk it through and, and kind of see how this could have just kept you in the trade when you recognize this trade was doing exactly what it should be doing. So now we have an entry, or let's assume we have an entry here, right? We get the nice reclaim of VWAP, dip out, claim, clean hold, and then we get the what we're hoping will be the assumption of the trend. A lot of people would just be targeting the top of this, um, but let's see what happens, You know, depending on the variables involved. Okay. Well, we're starting to see volume start to come in. That's very good for our trade. But do I wanna exit right there at the top? I don't really think so because I really think that with the 
way this stock is trading now, this could actually trend much further than that. So I'm going to adjust my reason to sell. And as the price action moves in my favor, I'm just going to trail it up using this 21 EMA. And what I'm going to look for specifically is a close below the 21 EMA. You could use the nine if you were doing an accelerated trend, but that's more of a momentum type scalp. The 21 is really that guide for a really good trend. So we'll use the 21 EMA. And yeah, I could have made a really nice scalp taking this trade. And then right as it moved up, I could have sold everything and that would have been great. But I think there's more there. So I'm gonna stick with this 21 EMA and we're starting to get accelerated away from it but I'm not too worried about it because I really think this could start to trend. All right, we get a pullback, but we're not there. Okay, we get a move closer, but again, I'm just trailing it up using this 21 EMA. I'm waiting for a close below the 21 EMA. That's that green line. Keep getting close, we keep getting close. We're closing right on it. Okay, we're close below it, but it's so close. Okay, all right, I'm out of my trade. But instead of taking the trade just to here, which would have been the natural profit target, I was able to just stay in the trade until it went up almost double where it went from before. All I had to do was just use the appropriate reason to sell for a stock that was doing exactly what it should do. I don't care if it's the exact top. I don't care if it's you know gonna go higher or lower. I just did more than what I could have done simply by having this other reason to sell. You can do the first higher high or first lower low when something starts to trend. This is something we talk a lot about with our trader in our trader development meeting. When something's trending, what is the definition of trending? It's making, if it's trending to the upside, it's making higher highs and higher lows. And if it's trending to the downside, it's making lower highs and lower lows. When you recognize something as trending, you know, anytime something's just kind of going in that direction, and it's, you can see those distinct lower highs and lower lows in this case because it's a short trade. You just wanna stay with it until it fails to make a lower low. So you're gonna stay with it until it makes a new higher low. So anytime price action starts to roll and makes a lower low, we're just gonna stay with the trade. We'll play through this entire trade and what's really interesting is we don't get a higher low all the way until 11.35, right in here. Now, most traders would be down and out of the trade somewhere in here, but look, we just keep making lower lows, lower lows, lower lows, lower lows, lower lows, lower low, lower low, and finally we make a higher low telling us there's the potential that this trend has changed. So this is a very simple way for a move to move trade in order to stay with the trade longer. Let's go bar by bar through this entire trade, which we can start the trade way back here at 10, almost 10 o'clock. We're gonna keep moving forward in this trade. We get a nice down move. I mean, honestly, a lot of times I would just take profits there if I wasn't thinking about this trade in the right way. But now all I'm looking for is, okay, we made a lower low. All right, we popped up, we didn't make a higher high. Let's see if we can make another lower low. Okay, we have another lower low. Oh, wow, this trade's actually really working nicely. Now we're back below the open. Let's see if we make, if we can get another lower low at some point. It has to kind of settle down. Okay, we keep going lower, we keep going lower. Okay, now at this point, I'm definitely thinking, all right, that was a really good trade. I don't know how much further we can go, but I wanna let the stock, I'll let it wiggle against me, I wanna let it put in a higher low in order for me to exit the trade. That could be a higher low, but nope, it's not. Okay, I'll just stay with it. Okay, we put in a low, let's see. Well, there's a lower low. Okay, there's another lower low. Now we're balancing, so I, I definitely think we're going to pop up and put in a lower, a higher low at some point. But no, we put in a lower low. Lower low. Every time we break, we keep breaking to the downside. Okay, now we have a good pop. All right, now I'm really on high alert for this higher low to potentially be put in. 
Okay, that's, jeez, oh, we just keep selling, keep selling, I like it. All right, I still don't have a reason to exit my move to move trade. It's almost turning into a trend trade, but. Okay, now finally, finally, we have a very slight, but a higher low. Now I can finally exit my trade. Because at this point, I don't care what happens. I just stayed in the trade because the trade was working very, very well for me. So this was a good reason to sell for a move to move trade. We're gonna go into some general exits and we're gonna talk about this from the context of a trade to hold and a swing trade. Now these general exit criteria, they can be used on any time frame. We're just going to observe them and, and, and walk through them from the context of a trade to hold, intraday trade to hold, and then we'll look at one um, in terms of a swing trade. Now these are two different concepts, but they, they again, they can be applied anywhere you want. Um, I can use them on, on my scalp sometimes. You can use them for move to move trades. Um, you can even use them for, for multi-day, multi-week swing trades. This first one is a measured move right? A measured move is a very simple way to, to look for profit targets, especially when something is moving in kind of the, the right way. So what we'll do is we'll look at this move. Let's assume or let's just guess that we weren't in this SoFi trade at all. But really quickly, we could, you know, before this pullback, right? Once we get this pullback, then we can set a general target for where we think the move might go as it starts to act pretty well for a trade to hold after observing the first leg of this trade to hold. So this first move is from 905 to 940, so 35 cents, right? It doesn't seem like a lot, but you can get as much size as you want in a stock like this. It's really, really liquid. So 35 cent move. Okay, now we get this pullback and we'll look at it here. Let's assume that the pullback ends right here at this 918. All right, let's round it, round it to 920. Right, so we're looking for 35 cents from there, so it'd be 55. Well, okay, maybe we got one cent short of it, but essentially you can treat that entire thing like a measured move. So this first up move tends to, in a lot of cases, it'll equal the second one, especially for more of trade to hold type thing. You can see how long this pullback is. It, it's not really a move to move setup, which is why we're talking about it as a potential trade to hold here. So let's go through this whole thing bar by bar. We'll start way back here and we'll go through it very, very quickly. Okay, so we have this period of consolidation and let's look, this break, we know this break is gonna start. And what we really wanna start to focus on is whether we're in the stock or not in the stock, it doesn't really matter. What we really wanna focus on when we identify, let's assume we didn't even see the stock. Maybe you were in it already and it was a trade to hold and you were holding it through this entire pullback. I don't know, that's perfectly fine if you were. But either way, I wouldn't have been because you had, again, that double stuff and I would have been out of my trade right there. But then we kind of get this pullback and all I'm thinking is, okay, if this is gonna make another leg higher, where might that be? The reason why I'm thinking about that is it helps me identify what my risk reward is, which helps me identify what sort of probability I would really need for this trade. So if I'm thinking about, I potentially could get 35 cents in this on a measured move. Okay, so how much am I gonna risk in that? Well, I'm gonna have to find an area where price really sets up for me and then find a really tight spot, as tight as I possibly can to risk against. And that means not just buying down and hoping, it means actually getting a setup so I can get that continuation. Wow, we got almost to view up, but we didn't. Oh, that's interesting, okay. Now, let's see if we can start to break out of this little consolidation. If we break higher, you know, you could just target this, but that's really only about 20 cents. I think I could get a, at least 35 cents, maybe more, without much significantly changing from this move. So let me wait for a break, and if I get a break higher, I'll enter the trade. Okay, I got a break higher. Now I can risk kind of down below the low of that. So that looks like um, 15, and I'm in from 22, so about seven or eight cents. Right, So I can risk really tight, but I don't wanna set some arbitrary target of, of just right here. I wanna actually see where this can go. And in this case, I'm thinking that was a really good up move. It could potentially make a measured move up to 35 cents. So if I'm in from 20 and I'm risking 
you know, basically seven cents, or even if I'm in from 22, say, and I'm risking, you know, what, eight cents, I'll take that, maybe even less. And all I'm thinking is measured move, measured move, measured move. So I don't have any reason to sell. And as the stock kind of continues to go higher, all I'm thinking is that, okay, right into that 55, that would be a reason to sell. Okay, we go up to the high there. And if this is a real trade to hold, okay, now we're through, that's great. I wanna see, can we get really to that high and use that measured move target? Keep going, we keep getting close. Oh, we're so close and I would take it off there. That's pretty good, right? But a measured move target is a great way on a trade to hold where you're just being very open with the way the price action can trade and you're allowing the stock to do what it needs to do. This final one is going to be a true, true swing trade. <laughs> and we are going to be focused a lot on the daily chart back here. And what, what level we're going to focus on is this 128. And why it's such an interesting level. You can see down here on the daily chart that that was the, the gap below was just about there. And then you can see we tested that level and we failed there. So it definitely became an important resistance area. And then it went above and it acted as a support area. This is going way, way back. But for the purposes of our trade, I want to identify important levels. And as price starts to respond well, I want to kind of think about where this stock can go, especially if I'm swing trading. I know most of the time they say swing trading three to one and all that stuff, but like, I want to maximize my profit when a stock is acting right, particularly in this case when a market's acting right. So let's assume that, you know, again, resistance became support at this 100 level. And maybe I got a trade set up on this little hold above 110, right? And I'm risking down to 100 or something like that, right? Well, I knew that this 128 level was really, really important on a daily. And it's really tough to do it on any other chart. But if I'm swing trading and I knew that 128 was really important, I could have taken this trade all the way up into this resistance area and then sold right there, which it looks like people did because you can see how aggressively it was sold right there. But it's a way to use prior levels as a really important guide for where it can go, especially prior support or resistance levels that were very important. So when we talk about levels on the daily charts, a lot of times why we're talking about those levels is because it shows areas that have mattered to that stock in the past, and those can act as magnets. So if you're swing trading something, try and see if it'll get all the way to those magnets. You know, we're not talking about an arbitrary price in this case. We're talking about 128 because it mattered previously in the stock. So if you're gonna be swing trading something, look left on the chart, identify areas that were important to this stock previously, and then see if your stock can make it all the way there. All right, we covered a lot, but overall the objective here is to take these different reasons to sell, these various types of reasons to sell, and then apply them to your trading. So we've talked about nine, maybe 10 elite level strategies that can be situationally used by traders on our desk, and they're used every day by traders on our desk to make the most of a really good opportunity or to protect themselves when an opportunity may look good, but it's not as good as we think. So you can use these, or you can let these reasons to sell use you. Back on the, the Bitcoin chart, what was the trade on that, if, if it's easy, easy to pull up? So I was, since it was a scalp, the 9 EMA reclaim scalp, that's not right. in your scalping program. Um, it's really only for really strong stocks. Sorry, I'm trying to pull it up, here we go. Uh, all right, so 9 EMA reclaim. Um, where is it here, I think? No, uh, but there's an example of it here. Uh, so 9 EMA reclaim is when you have something that starts to be strong. This could, let's, let's say this is the example, right? And it dips below the 9 EMA, but doesn't really close below the 21 EMA. And then within three bars, typically three or four bars, um, gets back above the 9 EMA. This isn't the best example, but it is a good example. 
Oh, You're yeah, looking for nice. continued momentum to the upside. That one was a pretty good example. The one that we did. I don't. I, I don't know where it was, but no, I, I get it. I, I wasn't sure what the what the, the original trade was, but this is a good example on the short side, right? So you get a pop up, and then you know it it clears the nine EMA. So anybody that was trading off the nine EMA stopped out, but it never gets above the twenty one, and then it gets right back below the nine, right? So your your entry is on the break of the nine. And your stop is obviously right there, right? Yeah. And what you're looking for is exactly this sort of move, that real momentum sort of move. So you want to see increased volume. You want to see the price action accelerate. And then you're kind of taking it off. You can get this sort of weird trending action where it kind of trends um, after that. Like this is more like this is actually pretty good. Of it just keeps going up, keeps going up, keeps going up. And I wouldn't even trail it with the nine. I would just kind of use one of the other reasons to sell. But the nine is, is kind of your entry there. Make sense? Yep. Jeff, I had one about when we talked about waiting for on the scalping one on the one minute chart, not letting it wick you out, but waiting for it to close below the previous bar or lower high. Yeah. Um, when are situations where you'd want to like actually get stopped out when it breaks? I know a lot of guys talk about the two minute bar break. And when it breaks right away, they're getting out. When are situations where you think it makes sense to wait for the bar to close? If it takes out two or more bars, I would get out. Like on a wick, I would get out. But like, like it's tough because it's just like, I think I tend to look at the closes more. Because I've just, there are so many times that you get those big wicks and you're like, oh man, this is going to close. And then like the sellers take it back in and that's actually the start of another leg. Well, when you had that um, space example, yeah, when we were going through it slow, you'd see like down move, green bar, down move, green bar. And I'm like, yeah. I feel like it gets stopped out so often on those first down moves. Um, yeah. So it's a good point about waiting for the close. That's why a lot of times I'll wait for the close because of exactly what you're talking about. It can look really bad until the last 30 seconds, last 10 seconds of a bar. But at the end of the day, when the bar closes, it looks amazing. And... I always think of it this way, and this is a, this is kind of a weird concept, but <clears throat> so you ever like, I'll use ping pong as an example, right? So like I was playing ping pong over the weekend with one of my buddies and like, like I was down, I think in the first game I was down like, it was like 18 to seven or something like that, right? And I was down and I came back and won, right? And then the second game I was down, I think it was like, like uh, 15 to 12 or something like that, right? And I came back and won. Well, like I felt like I could have kept playing all day and just smoked him in every game after that because he gave me everything he had and he still couldn't like, couldn't get it done, right? And like, I'm not saying I'm a very good ping pong player. I'm not, but like I could see the momentum like just completely shift and he gave it everything he had and it didn't, it just didn't get the job done. And I think about that with stocks and, 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 and the way things trade sometimes. That space, you'd see that down wick and the sellers gave it everything they had to get it lower and they just couldn't get the job done. And then again and again and again. And it's just like when that happens, I'm actually feeling better in my long because the sellers have already given it their best shot and they just can't get the job done. And I feel like I can stay in that stock until something really significant changes. So every time I see one of those wicks, but then the close is actually pretty decent, it gives me a little more confidence to stay with that trade. Is, it, is that because it's effectively the same price dynamic as the stuff scalp, right? Like it's, those stuff candles all have a similar supply and demand dynamic going on. They do. They very much do. Where people see it wick down and really aggressive shorts will they'll hit it, right? They'll be like, this is the top. That's it. It's going lower. And then they'll cover as soon as it lifts or buyers like Carter will get scared and they'll be like, oh man, I got to stop out. Right. But then it goes right back up and they're like, oh, now I got to chase. Right. And sorry to pick on you, Carter, but like, you know, it's little things like that, that I do think I think about with, with regard to the way stocks trade, particularly competitive stocks and stocks that are moving like, you know, kind of uh, with a lot of participation. Makes sense. Don't people talk about, like even on a daily chart, the thing that really matters is where you close at the end of the day. That yeah, could be I mean, totally wrong, but yeah, people talk about that a lot, and I think it matters situationally. Um, 
I think it. I think the the open and the close are just psychological anchor anchor points more than anything else, right? The price action over the course and the unfolding nature of the price action is really the story. The open and the close are just events, right? But people do make decisions off of the open and the close, um, and so they become important. But the reality is, the narrative I think matters far more than the open or the close. Hey, Jeff, a uh, question. So how do you develop the confidence in your trading to be able to stick with one of these reasons to sell? Because there's times where I might trade like a first red bar uh, reason to sell, and it may not work as well, you know, as I expected um, one or two times. And then I start to lose confidence and I start to switch to something else. Maybe I switch to a uh, nine EMA uh, trail. Yeah or whatnot. So how do you, you know, kind of stick with one throughout your 20 trade sample and not switch back and forth? No, so you don't. You don't. You don't stick with one through your 20 trade sample. These are after you're, you've got your 20 trade samples done. Your first 20 trades should have defined risk reward targets for the most part, or defined really appropriate reasons to sell for the most part. You should have really clear criteria for your first 20 trades. This is once you're through it and you have confidence in the setup. Does that make sense? Did I not explain that appropriately? I could have, I could have missed that or, or not said it the right way. But once you, know, once you know you have edge in the setup, there are times where you can actually just stay with the trade longer and you can really let it pay you. And that's why I tried to equate as many of these examples as to trades that we already know, we already know some of the dynamics of. Because these can be things when the stock is just working and it just keeps working. Like if you set that arbitrary target, that kind of that, that reference point target, you're actually telling the stock how much it's gonna pay you versus letting it just pay you as much as it wants. Same thing for that backside one that broke, that that you know, that that double stuff. Like you're you're telling the stock, no, you're gonna pay me to VWAP. But it's like the stock's telling you, no, no, I'm not. So why would you let that come all the way back against you? Once you're through your 20 trade sample, that's actually where trading kind of gets fun. Because you can recognize, wow, this is actually working as well as I thought or better. This is exactly what I want. I'm gonna change my reason to sell here. I'm going to use, and the, the the difference between the first red bar, the uh, higher low, and the EMAs are just, they're totally different tools to apply in totally different situations. And when you really know your trades, and if you take 20 of, the fir of them consistently, you're going to understand when to apply what tool. So in a backside that I want to stay with, I wouldn't really use a 21 EMA from there because I actually expect there to be really good momentum for the backside. So I would use either a one minute bar low or I'd use a first red bar, right? Second chance scalp. I wouldn't use a 21 EMA because it's not a trending trade. I wouldn't even use a nine EMA because I know it can kind of wick down and, and come back up. And especially early on in that trade, you expect it to kind of start and then the momentum to really take off. Well, I would use a trend line or I would use a first really big red bar or I would use a, a two minute or one minute low takeout or something like that. So the reason it doesn't take long to understand what scenarios you can apply. And it really once you get two or three of these really good trades that just kind of work, you'll understand better next time. So these aren't really things to try out and see if they work. They're things to do once you know that you have edge in that trade. And it seems like this huge wall that you have to climb, right? How do I know if I have edge in this trade? Man, I'm gonna have to wait for 20 examples. For you guys that are actively trading in the eight weeks that you're with us, you'll see 20 examples of probably eight different setups. Like out of some of the scalps that you guys are learning, you can see 20 setups in a week. You can see 10 in a week sometimes. You could see, um, if we get a lot of volatility, you'll see four different scalps that each trade 15 times in a week. Like you will just get that opportunity. The challenge is being aware of it and being aware of where you are in the development phase of it. Uh, yeah. I, I, one question for the SoFi example. Yep. Um, 
what I mean, I mean kind of just going off what we were just talking about what can really give you enough conviction in that trade like okay I think we're going to move this second leg up just as much as the first leg did. Like that's just like a really strong stock. I, I don't know. That's exactly why. That's a really yeah. strong stock. <laughs> well, how do you identify that so early in the day? Uh, that wasn't early in the day. That was a that was a technical breakout. All right, like like so we're talking about this day right here. That was a long consolidation, right? Where was this on the daily? The uh, 15th? So it's right here, right? So it had gapped down. It was a long consolidation. It couldn't get any lower, right? So oh, all, yeah. all I'm thinking is this is a really strong stock. And even on the gap down, it couldn't even go below support at all. Like, I think this can at least go like up, but I don't know how high up, right? And I actually didn't know that it was that, cl that close. I knew it was a measured move, but I didn't know it was like literally within like pennies. When I, when I chose this example, all I was thinking about was I knew that that was a measured move and that was a measured move. And that second leg tends to be a little more grindy, but like you will find these everywhere. Like if you like to trade retracements, like you will find measured moves absolutely everywhere. In a, in a weak stock, you want to use measured moves to the downside. In a strong stock, you want to use measured moves to the upside. And all you're doing is like just kind of moving your, your mental stop through the move, right? And then, like, I would argue that the stock actually really started to work well right here, right? Where it really just, I like, high, yeah. yeah, like, it started to work well, like, this entire move. But, like, we didn't know if it would have come in here and, like, stuffed there, like, a double stuff. Then I probably would have just been out. I would have been like, okay, that's resistance, whatever. But, like, it started to work so well. That's where you can be like, I'm just going to stick in this until it really tells me. And granted, it's only, like, 10 cents, but I'm like a lot of size, 10 cents is a lot of money. Yep. So, you know. Okay. Jeff, I have one last question. Yeah. Can you pull up the Carvana example? Yeah. Yeah. So basically my question is when I'm trailing something to the short side, it was interesting that you brought up, like once you see that higher low put in the way I kind of trail these is wait for the lower highs to be broken. Cause I feel like a lot of times you can get a higher low put in, but you don't break the lower high and then roll over. Um, which one was the example? So you don't, you don't make a higher low or a higher high. Correct. Okay. Which I, I had never thought about like using the lower low and it makes sense, but I feel like until you break the lower high, the trend's not actually over. That's true. That's a good way to look at it as well. But I don't want to, where's the first time we make a higher high? I think 1107 was kind of the one where, okay, maybe you put in a higher low. A higher high. Uh, you mean a higher low? Yeah. Right here. Like, I feel like the higher lows are hard to define, whereas like a lot of times the lower highs can be much clearer to me. The higher lows can be much clearer or higher highs can be much clearer. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I, I think I, I think I get what you're saying. But here yeah. at this point, it's like I would never feel like that's a high or low right here. That's it's yeah. still in a consolidation. Like I want to see an actual pop up and then an attempt that looks like it's really going to roll. Like that's just yeah. consolidation sideways, like teeny tiny pop. Like I don't I don't view that at all. I, I guess I never would have even considered that being a higher low. Yeah. Like maybe if it would have popped up from there, but like that would have been a weird higher low given this yeah. sort of price action. Yeah, that's not a good example, but just in general, I feel like you might be able to put in the higher low, but still be making lower highs and continuing with that trend. You can, you can. And you can say that I'm going to use the higher high concept, which I guess would be stopped out here, right? That, that's, that looks like the first time we actually put in a higher high or do we do it here? I don't know. It looks like maybe right here. Yeah. I just, I always think about it like, you know, I need the buyers to beat me. Mm -hmm. Right. And the buyers are going to beat me by putting in a higher low. That's it. And it's yeah. from, it's from trading these on earnings trades for the most part, like earnings trades, you'll see, okay, it looks like maybe it's a higher low. Okay. It's not, <laughs> it looks like maybe it's a higher low. Okay. It's not. And they just keep selling it and selling it and selling it all day long. And those are trades that I want to stay in as long as I possibly can. 
And the reality is like when it is the first higher load, the tape actually feels different a lot of times. Like you, you actually just like it seemed like that in Tesla just now. Um, like just before I came in here. So this Carter right here, this is what I'm talking about. That price action just feels different, right? Yeah, like you, nice. you can even see it in the chart when it puts in a higher low. And I know this was like lower high, slightly higher low, like all that stuff. But this sort of feel where it like breaks and then the buyers are like, yeah, you're done. Like that sort of feeling is like when you're short, you're like, oh, crap. Because you know that it's the higher low. So this is not a good example technically, but like that feeling is what I'm talking about. Where everybody's like, okay, this is going to go make a new low. And the buyers just like step in. You can see the quickness of the response, right? The abruptness of the response there. So, all right. Any other questions, thoughts, comments? Take these and study them. They are very different types of moves. Um, I promise you, if you don't try and apply them to all of your trades, think about which ones would work for which trades. To answer your question, Ozzy, I think that that's really the appropriate thing. And that's why we tried to classify them as, as momentum, trend, and then, then trades to hold. Because if you're expecting momentum, then think about using a momentum exit, right? If you're thinking about trends, think about using a trending exit. If you're thinking about a trade to hold, thinking about the bigger picture trade to hold, right? And I think if you just focus on these three categories and understand the times that you're going to apply these, you'll find, if you guys find two or three trades a month where you can double your P&L without doing anything, like think about the confidence boost that you can get from that. Like how much skill development you can have just from that, right? And like, what's the worst case scenario? You you use the wrong strategy and you, you, you make as much as you would have made otherwise. Like, you know, this is just like trying to capture real upside. And so I think that there's something kind of special in, under, in being exposed to these at least. And that's why I wanted to do this is just expose you guys to this. And, you know, I think that we've certainly seen a lot of greatness in trading, but we've seen so much rigidity when it comes to my exit was here. My exit was here. My exit was here. Oh man, that thing ran for so long afterwards. Well, then instead of just bitching and moaning about it, arm yourself with one or multiple of these strategies and take advantage of it next time. Because the market isn't asking if you're in or out of the position. The market is going to do what it is going to do. The stocks are going to trade the way they're going to trade. Your job is to take advantage of the opportunities when they are present. And this is a way to take full advantage of an opportunity when it is presented to you. So you're an active trader, not doing as well as you want, not doing as well as you deserve. And you just can't figure out why you can't become profitable no matter how hard you try. Well, let me show you why. This is your competition. The traders in this room. This room right here is full of elite traders, some of whom are making seven and even eight figures a year. In fact, our top guys have made nearly 20 million each in net trading profits in a single year. Let's head to my office so I can share more. So you're probably used to seeing videos of lavish trader lifestyles, trading gurus, trading off of a laptop for an hour a day, heck, maybe even 15 minutes a day, and then them relaxing on some secluded beach for the rest of the day. Well, all I can tell you is that our traders train like pro athletes. They live and breathe the markets and are continually working on their trading skills. Because at our firm, that's what we found it really takes to make it in this game. I'm Mike Bellafieri, co-founder and managing partner of SMB Capital, one of the world's top proprietary trading firms located in Midtown Manhattan. And we're always looking for trading talent to hire and develop. And not just to trade in-house on our desk, but also to trade from their own home entirely using our firm's capital. And we have numerous traders doing just that, allowing them to make upwards of seven figures trading the firm's capital without risking their own money. But to even get a shot at something like that, you need to have the right training, 
That's why we're doing a new free online presentation in which we share how you can get an interview with SMB to become an in-house or remote trader, trading firm capital without risking yours and gaining access to all of our firm's coaching and resources. And the best part, you don't have to be a profitable trader yet. In fact, we prefer to mold profitable traders with our methods and our techniques. That's why we have just three simple criteria that can earn anyone an interview. We're looking for highly ambitious and determined traders who fit our culture first and foremost. So if you believe that could be you, sign up for the free one hour online presentation by clicking the link that's in your top right corner of your screen now.